you know where the opportunities are and what the opportunities really are because that's uh, i think the most fundamental part of innovation we're going to talk about the opportunity detection kit which is something that has been de designed as a tool for innovators to know what they are really looking for and what the um, users of their innovation are really looking for because this is a point that often goes wrong you 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 think of something that is absolutely brilliant and it's uh it's it's a great innovation and then nobody wants to use it how often does that happen and and how can you be sure that you don't lose time or energy um innovating something inventing something that nobody really wants let's start off with with an example of something that went wrong like an innovation where, where the designers thought well we have it here and somehow it didn't work uh Annemarie mink is here with me she's from the delft university and benjamin mull he uh, works in delft also uh, tell me what's a great example of things that went wrong well uh, uh, my specific field is uh, design for development so uh, designing products for uh, cultures abroad uh, development projects um and a lot of projects uh, are concerned with um, uh, stoves or uh, sanitation. And uh, there are um, uh, examples that uh, a toilet is used as a storage facility or, uh, and not as a toilet anymore. Or um, um, uh, uh, mosquito nets that uh, are used to play football or uh, as a fishing net. So. Um, they were intended for different purposes than what they are actually used for. Why would you use a toilet as um, as a storage system for your books or toys or whatever? Why would why would anyone do that? Well, if it doesn't fit your culture or your habits, uh, or uh, a, a toilet like a, a box where you can go to to go to the toilet. Um, uh, it's not in your house. In the in the night, it can be dangerous, especially for women to go out to such a toilet facility, um, or it's just uh, not being used anymore. And uh, then people use it in a different way. Because that's something very cultural: how you go to the toilet, uh, where you want it to be, how you want the toilet to look. That's that's really a cultural question. So in this particular case, the innovator should have gone there first and and looked how the people do it before yeah. innovating anything yeah and and still with all these projects people go there and people talk to to the the target audience and uh, uh but it doesn't always uh fit uh, with their uh, actual needs or wants this is something that happens uh, very often benjamin you went to uh, colombia to research um prosthesis for people that have lost uh, their leg for instance what did what did you research um yes we started with a, a project about a prosthesis and uh, we had an example from india where prosthesis were provided uh, for free to people and we thought we can maybe do a same kind of company in colombia but then um, we figure out that in colombia uh, cheap or free uh, prosthesis are related to not good quality so people didn't want uh, a cheap prosthesis you um, have to make it expensive otherwise people think it's not worthy yeah that could be a solution because uh, quality um, is very important in colombia and uh, quality is uh, our high prices so that was the way they argue often and how how did that work in in india for instance because they're the same problem um, it needs to be innovated. Prothesis people need it there too. Do they also want uh, the, the more expensive one, or, or is it a different culture? Um, in India, it's a little bit different. People want uh, a prosthesis because uh, they want to 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 work again, to be accepted in uh, in the social lives. Uh, so they want uh, a really an, a real fake leg. So an, uh, a prosthesis that really looks like their own leg, so other people uh, will accept them. So it's really a, a something social uh, inclusion. Because it's because it's also it's not just a financial loss not to have a leg. It's also a, a, a social loss. You're you're not a worthy person because you don't have two legs and two arms, and so people will not regard you as a full person. 
Yeah, and the thing is that you're you're not able to work anymore, so you do not bring income to the family. Or uh, so we interviewed uh, some people who lost their leg in India, and um, uh, in one for in one instance, uh, the children abandoned their father because he was a burden to their family uh, instead of providing for them. Uh, and in another case, uh, uh, the uh, father-in-law came to take his daughter back. Uh, because uh, she was married to someone without a leg. Uh, so in that sense, he could not provide for her anymore. Now, what's the, what's the kit about? Because these are very different examples. How can you design one tool that helps in all these cases to know what you're looking for exactly and to do your research more properly? What, do, what, is it, what does it look like, the kit? Well, the... the, the um, uh, reasons behind the kit is that uh, as product designers you have to investigate your potential users in uh, a very quick way. You don't have time uh, to s spend like a year in the field to get to know your potential users. So you have to make a rapid assessment. And uh, what we often do is, is look a bit too narrow-minded towards the product and the things closely related to the product. And what the kit is for is to look broader, to look at every aspect of a human life uh, and, and the well-being of people, um, to find everything that is relevant for the product, also the things that are not like very clear from the start. So we start with a, a timeline where you um, uh, just ask people about their daily life and uh, what they do. And uh, we developed um, a set of teams, um, for example, uh, safety or accommodation or health, uh, mobility. And um, um, if someone says, like, I get up in the morning and uh, I, I take some food, then we ask, oh, uh, nutrition, what uh, do you eat? Uh, what is your, how many times a day do you eat? So we have a lot of example questions that you can use to, to gather insights about people's lives. And in the end, after you um, discussed with people about their lives, so it's not like in the interview style, but really starting a, a conversation, and in the end, um, they can. Um, we, have, we have an exercise that you can prioritize uh, the different teams to what is most important to your life. So is it like more like a questionnaire? Y you have various questionnaires in, in you know, uh, there's the Socrates designed one already, uh, Proust did one, um, a box of cards with, with questions, or is it more like a scheme that you have to follow in order to get to uh, the important themes. Uh, how, what does it look like? Well, it's 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 meant not to be a questionnaire. It's uh, just to start discussions. So the 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 questions, the the box with questions or all the cards, uh, are meant to trigger discussion to to bring about stories about people's lives. So it's not every interview is different. Uh, it's just what comes up in the interview and where you uh, go deeper into. Um, yeah, and, and we encourage people to draw their lives or to we draw ourselves as designers uh, about their lives. Uh, so um, uh, that brings up more, uh, um, yeah, also questions from the, from the people you interview. And um, we often work with uh, interpreters. So if you draw things, you have a direct line of communication to the uh, participant. This might be the next the nice moment to talk to uh, Madhab, and he's in India right now. Madhab. Yeah. Ah, there you tell are. Tell me. Madhab, tell me, you, you were working already quite long <laughs> as a researcher before you got this, this tool, this kit. Um, can, can you tell me what did it do for you? How did it help? Or how did it not help? Yeah, that, the ink. If you, yeah, that was, uh, uh, Anamari rightly pointed out, it was not uh, purely a questionnaire kind of thing. Uh, it's basically uh, interacting and uh, listening. And uh, she also used uh, different cards and uh, kind of uh, other material that uh, she can directly communicate with, uh, uh, with us. And uh, this is a very good tool. Normally, uh, yes, I also learned um, how uh, when there is a language problem, because in India, every, if you 
to travel 100 km you will get a different kind of language so at a, uh, the place where uh, people don't know your language how to communicate with them and um, and then questionnaire was uh, otherwise uh, i felt it's good and uh, it uh, i also use and then uh, i think another uh, point i want to mention that uh, the interview that uh, hello Thank you, my dad from uh, India. I didn't understand everything he said, but uh, there, there was also some connection problem here and there. But I think what he said is it's important to talk directly to people. And what you said is not an interview, but you have to communicate in different ways. Uh, just to yeah and I think one one important I think important thing he said is that uh, gradually during the conversation the women started to open up so in first instance they are a bit hesitant to like share their whole life with you uh, and, but because you have this conversation uh, they they started to open up and share more about their lives we, we talked about a few cases that needed innovation um, before. You used this uh, kit to, to really find out what people wanted. You, for instance, said that it's important that people um, think it's, it's a good prosthesis bef before they start. It shouldn't be cheap. It shouldn't look cheap. In India, it was more important that it looked natural, so people see you as a person with two legs. You also talked about toilets. It has to be on the outside because you don't want it to be on the inside, or in some cases, it has to be on the inside while you don't want it to be on the outside. That's very important because people need to go there and need to want to go there. Uh, you also talked about the stove, which was an old invention, a stove that is faster uh, and, and easier to use, but somehow didn't come across. What was the innovation needed there, and how did you get there? Well, well there, there are multiple uh, stove projects. Uh, uh, one uh, stove, for instance, um, um, uh, was that it, uh, it's, it's not the one in the article, but the Philips Chula. Um, uh, it, it's a clay stove. The, the problem with, with stoves is uh, people can make themselves their own stove with clay and they use it often in the house so a lot of smoke comes in and uh, well that's not so good for uh, especially uh, women's health. Um, and uh, 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 well, Philips designed with a local uh, um, uh, NGO, uh, non-governmental organization, uh, a stove that consisted out of multiple parts. Uh, because what they uh, found is that 
uh, sometimes if uh, a part of the stove breaks, uh, the stove has to be replaced fully, but has, that has to be on a specific day. It has to be brought in the house and it, it goes with a lot of uh, uh, festivities. And uh, But if, you, if they make it out of different parts and one part is broken, you can just replace the part. You don't need a whole new stove to, to bring in the house. So uh, uh, that's the kind of thing that... Um, I wouldn't think about in first instance. Now, I, w I would say that that if you have such a kit, what you're basically doing is is some kind of marketing research. It's it's what every company would do if they have any kind of innovation. Before Philips would would build a new machine of, of whatever kind, or before Apple would bring in a new cell phone or whatever, they would do this kind of research. Is is that in essence what you designed a, a marketing? tool well you can you can view it in that way I think that the biggest difference is that uh, uh, we urge you to to uh, uh, marketing research is often well I'm, I'm not a marketing expert but uh, it's a questionnaire people fill it in you you try to gather a lot of data from a lot of uh, people and, and this kit is more um, uh, you have to go there you have to talk to the people you have to feel the culture you have to see uh, how people live, what they do. Uh, so it's not only this kit that you use to interview, you also have to have to be there and uh, talk to people, observe people. Um, and this kit specifically is, is used to get this specific insights. You, you cannot, this is an, an, an interview that takes around two hours. In once it took me five hours to complete the interview because people like to chat a lot so it takes a lot of time you cannot like question hundreds of people's uh, people about it um, so you you ask different uh, people uh, uh, a man in his 50s a girl uh, uh, a woman uh, I don't know different jobs different age um, and uh, you try to to get out some specific uh, um, uh, well mainly cultural things to uh, incorporate in your design because the, the important lesson is that people are not always rational. That then something might be the best design, but people can choose differently. I, I had a conference about music last week, and they talked about LP records, and the innovators were stunned that everybody now wants to listen to final LP records, and they don't choose the better product, which is the CD in their observation. And I think it works the same way for lots of innovations, that, that it's not always the mind that wins over the heart or the culture or, or other things. Did the, did the, the kid help you? Because you would have done the research anyway. Was it, was it a, a practical tool for you? Um, now, in the end, we didn't use the, the toolkit because uh, we, we, make, uh, we made the toolkit and uh, we make uh, some changes in it. And then we took it with us uh, to Colombia and uh, it was a really small toolkit and it was in our uh, laptop bag, but unfortunately the bag was stolen. So we didn't use the toolkit at all. Um, however, uh, we really used the steps. So uh, starting with the daily life of someone uh, that's easy to share. Uh, then we, we took the, the kind of themes and questions. So um, that the way of thinking we really used. And um, I think the most important stop listing priorities. Um, yeah, we also did that. So we did all the steps of the uh, opportunity kit, uh, although we didn't have the opportunity kit with us. And um, in the end, we concluded that the, the biggest problem in Colombia was that um, not that there was no prosthesis or not no good prosthesis, but that accessibility of prosthesis were the problem. So we designed uh, a new way to make prosthesis so more people can access prosthesis care. So that, yeah, it helped us. Because they don't have to fly to a hospital that is as far away. Uh, they, they don't have to leave home, leave their work behind to get their prosthesis. That was the, the difference it made. Okay, thank you very much for now. <laughs>